Dudorinos, welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast, the show where we're talking about modern and retro video games. I'm your player one, Brando. He's player two, Mike. Oh, hello. What's going on? It's another day. It's another day in Gamer's Paradise. Indeed. Yes. Welcome, definitely, everyone. Definitely for me today. Yeah, definitely for you. Uh, it, it, it's been a pretty stressful couple of days for you, and we're definitely going to get to that. But first and foremost, jeez. <laughs> I can't reach. I can't reach it. Not only could you, well, you could reach if you would have put in an effort. Yeah. Okay. So before we start, I want to thank everybody who has ever downloaded this show, listened to this show, followed us on social media. Thank you guys so much. But I want to, like, I've never really said this on the show, and I've really never made a post about it. But, uh, you know, we are now on TuneIn, if that is your podcast service of choice. Uh, Okay, yeah. So, like, now let, I'm just going to go through. We're, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Stitcher Radio. And we're on TuneIn. And, of course, you can also check out the archive over on YouTube, where you can also check out gameplay video from Twitch, which we're also on at Game X Play. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, Game X Play for social medias across the board. We have been posting on Instagram because we chronicled last week we got together. Yes. And uh, we got together to do the episode. We also got together on Friday. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, to, do, like, to do a little project to see if it would work. Uh, we you know, take it apart, you know, like PS4s, and maybe do something. It turned out to be a little bit more hassle than what it was worth. Probably wasn't going to fix the, uh, the actual issue that I had. Right. Um, but you were expecting a package, a parcel. I was. And that was Octopath Traveler, brand new for the Switch. You pre-ordered on Amazon. I did. And it didn't show up. It did not. All these players, all across, all, all, like, all everybody across, was posting their pictures. Everybody was posting pictures. And and like, look, like, look at my collector's edition. Because you just got the regular game, but you didn't even get that. No. Everyone's like, oh, I got, I, I'm just, you know, hey, I went and picked this up from the store, and I'm like, yeah, you could have done that. Too. I know, but I also would not have gotten the prime it, discount, prime yeah. discount, and then turn around and use my prime points and only really spend fifteen dollars. Mm. So. Yeah, which I could have used that on my two hundred dollar purchase of the <laughs> Fallout seventy six. Yeah. yeah, but you know. Yeah, so we're definitely going to talk about Prime a little bit later because Prime Day deals are going on right now this week as we record this. So, so get on there and put in for their sweepstakes and giveaways. Yeah, because they have all the giveaways and they have this and and they have the sales. We're going to talk about some of that later on, but I definitely want to like we. Like, we've been talking about posting more on social media, doing more Instagram stuff. Yes. And so I, t I, t I took a picture of you looking out longingly outside the window because at one point you actually were looking outside for your mail carrier. Yes, I was. And well, I heard her. And I thought, oh, is that it? But then I remembered it was UPS. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh. And then you're like, hey, go back. Yeah, so I took a picture. Took a picture. And then, of course, uh, on Saturday, it still didn't show up. No. And then it told you you were going to have to wait. So it's so what happened was I actually have the picture up picture here, so let me pull it up. So the first time around not the right photos. Um so the first time it said now expected July fourteenth or July through July seventeenth. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll get it Monday. Well, then, on Saturday, this was Friday that I took this picture, I think. No, Saturday morning. Saturday night, this changed right after I sent it to you, and it said, we'll be delivered the 17th. And I was like, it didn't say to the 17th, we'll be delivered the 17th. And I was like, nah, I, I, I'm going to call them if that happens. But it showed up. Yesterday. Monday, the 16th. Yes. So you sent me a picture, and you were, like, elated. You finally got the game. Yep. Um, Octopath Traveler 
has been selling very well. Yes, it, it has. It just came out Friday. And a lot of places are sold out. Our local GameStop had a couple copies. It did. And that was it. Um, of course, we did, because I haven't gone. I haven't been hunting for it because I'm not buying that right now. Um, it, n- nothing against the game. Uh, I, I am looking forward to it, and I, and I and I will pick it up eventually for the Switch. But so I've put, I think, an hour. Exact time is an hour and 33 minutes. I started with a new character I've never played before. Um, of course, in the first, I never played the second um, demo. Demo. I've only played the first one, and on the first one, you could only be Ulrich and Primrose. So in this one, I was the Huntress, and they do good with each element I've been to so far. The the etiquette, the speech. How people, mannerisms, well, really not mannerisms, because it is, <laughs> I mean, it is 8-bit, but, uh, or 16-bit, yeah, and it's it's well done, like, they took the time to create each city is its own city, it's not like, hey, you know, here's the realm, here you go, they're all the same, everything is very unique and different, and their unique abilities is really, really good. And I just started the thief one, and he, it actually, so when you go and get a new character, to be able to take them with you, you have to finish their quote-unquote origin story. And I'm just now getting to the thief's one where it's letting me do the heist that he has to do. I really enjoy it so far a lot. That's Uh, awesome. The gameplay is good. There's been some times where I um, have had to resort to like, oh shit, I'm gonna die. <laughs> like, there's some stuff that you can do to like kill yourself and everything, and it's fun so far. I really enjoy it. I, I hope to dive into it a little bit more here soon. Absolutely. It, it apparently like retailers are running out of the game, and, and Square Enix has apologized. Yes, and, and apparently it's it's a case over Japan as well, where Japanese retailers are running out of physical copies of the game, and so Square is like, "Hey, we're real sorry about that. Uh, we encourage you to download it." Of course, the download is the same price as a physical copy. Uh, being collectors, I'm like, Ugh. "Yeah, you that's know. why I pre-ordered mine." Exactly. So, but I was afraid of this. It's kind of like Lost Fear. When I got Lost Fear, there was only a limited amount of physical copies. Yeah. Now, Lost Fear is not, did not do nearly as well as Octopath has yeah. already. Right. So, I, I'm happy because that means for us, JRPGers, as good as this is selling, other others, micro developers or small developers are going, hmm, well, I can make a game like that. Yeah. So then we'll get more of the same. We're going to get more of the um, same, but not the exact same. But Right, yeah, no. Like What I was going to say, though, is that uh, apparently this is surprising Square with how well it's doing with the, with, like, with the sales. The actual numbers haven't been given, but the, to me this is a callback to Bravely Default all over again. When they released Bravely Default... Uh, and people swarmed over it, and, and you know, bought you know bought it on the on the 3ds, and it did really well. And they were like, "Oh well, okay, this is what well, oh people want this. This is old. You know, we only did this for the niche audience. Turns out there's a, there's a big market hardcore RPG audience that wants this stuff, and I, it just boggles my mind that they're always surprised by that because." You know that they're thinking that the main audience only wants the big action titles now because that's what sells. Right. Because there was definitely a period where traditional turn-based RPGs and stuff like that did go out of style. And it, then you saw all the companies shift to a more action style of game. I mean, just look at the just look at all the things that they did. Uh, and of course, bringing out the new series at, at the time of Kingdom Hearts. But then also the changes that they made to uh, FF12, and then th- then of course of course uh, uh, with FF15 to make that more of an action game. Uh, so they feel like act- like the general audiences that's where you're gonna find your find your market. But 
there's an audience for this, and especially with Octopath, with it being more of a retro, you know, style of game in an actual uh, design, you know. Right. So I'm here with the Metacritic scores slash user scores. On 41 critics, Metacritic itself gave it an 85. So that is the culmination of like all the reviews. For only Metacritic, only Metacritics. Now the user score is 8.4, so pretty much the same. IGN gave it a 9.3. It's reviewing very well. I mean, and that's uh, honestly for for something like this, for it being retro styled and old school RPG, and old school, yeah. and, it, and Metacritic's giving an 85. It's like so. Lost Fear they gave it a 60. Yeah, because it's too much of the same. That that was what it was. It wasn't. Oh, it's too much of the same. It's like, so when they announce this RPG machine, basically, that Square Enix is pumping out RPGs not on the main line, but on their sideline. Yeah. They said, we're going back to our roots. We're going back to what everybody really liked. One of the big inspirations of Lost Fear, Chrono Trigger. I mean, you can. It's everywhere in that game that I played so far. And that was a. And that was I am Sensuda. That was right. like, yeah. And so when you look at that, they're like, oh well, it, it's it's like this, and then it has a ship level that's just like FF4. Okay, well, FF4 is revered as one of the greatest RPGs of all time. Yeah. Why would you not put something similar in there? Or at least, but, or at least a wink, right? Uh, like, like and a it's, nod. It's, it's, and that's what what I've watched is because I haven't made it that far. Is that that's <laughs> what it is? Yeah, I barely started that game. I, that's I, I gotta I gotta get back into these RPGs. But anyways, it they said that they're they're going to do they're going to take back the old formula and they're going to use the old formulas. Like this game here is a mix between Final Fantasy, Bravely Default. That that is what it is. Yeah, and it has a little bit more to it than Bravely Default, but essentially that's what you're playing. Yeah, but it's a whole new story, and it's and it's reviewing well. It's selling absolutely fantastic. Well, when you review well, it's going to get more people who might not go out and get it. Will be like will buy it out of interest, then they'll or out, or out of curiosity. It'll be like, oh, this wow, this got like a, such a high risk score. I might go, yeah, okay, I'll I'll, I'll download it, or you know, it, it becomes more of an impulse buy. Then I, I feel like the main audience right now is this old RPGs that we played Final Fantasies, the old school ones. We played the well. How many? How many of the of this style of old RPG? There's a few of them, but there's not that many of them on the Switch. So therefore, no. like when you're when you're making a game exclusive for this new hardware, I mean it's not new; it's been out for a year. But uh, there's a growing market, you know. There is a worry, and then you start looking at other developers, other publishers, like uh, Bethesda, like a uh, Capcom. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Wait, wait, like like Rockstar. When they're looking at this new console and people are buying it and it's rolling off the shelves and it's an interesting piece of hardware, it's like I love mine. It's it's like something that hasn't quite been done to this level yet, and they're like, well, maybe, but how good would our game sell on there? Because it's like, okay, the system is selling, but would our games appeal to that market? So then you like, like Rockstar, they their their little toe in the water was La Noir. Interesting, but it just happened to be coinciding with them doing a remaster of that game anyway. Right. So it, to them, it was no okay, whatever. You know, it, it's not that much harder to while we're doing this for the other ones. We'll we'll tie this into it before you continue. The only thing that hurts, I think, it would have sold a lot better than it did. But when you've got such a massive amount of download mm. just to play it on there, yeah. You're, that's that's not okay. Yeah, like, yeah, we'll be talking about that later in a minute. Yeah, but, but continue. Or, but Oops. okay, so then you have Bethesda, and look at the games that. So you had you know here's Skyrim, old game, Doom, <laughs> uh, kind of an older game, uh, you know Wolfenstein, you know too. It's already been out for another system, so 
essentially, these are games that are not brand new to the market, but brand new to this market, you know? And, 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 and you are going to dip your toe in. It's just like in Capcom with Resident Evil Revelations. Are, are you okay? You, 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 you took I, I a break? I my nose and... Yeah, I had to blow my nose in. Did you just get lightheaded? Yeah. Well, I'm not really supposed to, quote-unquote, blow my nose very hard, so I have to do it slowly so that I don't blow out my blood clots. And it kind of hurts. That's all. That's almost t- uh, TMI. Well, so you got some pickups. You got some pickups. <laughs> uh, we'll, 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 we'll carry on and change we'll subject. carry on. <laughs> change so the subject. I got Has Been Heroes because I it reviewed well. Mm-hmm. A lot of people like this game. It, it's got a, nothing but praise that I've seen. So I, for fourteen dollars, fifteen dollars, why not? Sure. So I think, I, I think it came out brand new for forty, thirty, yeah. or forty. So I picked it up, and um, so there's two different cover arts, and I thought that was kind of cool. So I obviously picked the better one. The one that you <laughs> like better, right? So this one is the darker. Uh, it's not. It's the dark case. I don't know how else to put it because I, I don't know really. The differences are is the one cover is, has a purple-ish background. The other one is gold, well, but the whole scene is completely different. Right. Well, and see, and that's the one that I've seen is the other one. That's the one that, that right. I recognize the cover art by. Yeah, and then in the inside, it has cover art on the inside with all of the, the heroes mm-hmm. and villains. Heroes on one side, villains on the other. So I picked that up. Um, yet again, I have not played it, so I don't have a opinion on it. But everything I've seen about it, it is reviewed well. Well, I mean, and and again, you know, of course, I'm not buying that many games right now. Uh, I think the last actual game that I bought, like other than what I said, like the digital game, a physical right. going out and hunting or buying a physical copy of the game, I think that was God of War. And yeah, so I, I've been doing really good on that. Uh, you know. You know, yeah. tapping that vein. Tapping that vein you today. Know, um, I, I actually did get something. But it was cheap and super cheap and something that I've actually seen for like $10. Right. On on clearance at Walmart. So I almost bought it for $10. But today, I got it for $3.20. Yeah, you can't, be, you can't at, argue that. Marked at 4 it was actually two ninety nine, And it is the best of the PlayStation Network. Volume 1, which I don't know if there is a volume 2. Right, let's find out. Keep going. Uh but this includes best uh, of, best of the PlayStation best of PlayStation Network Volume okay. One. It, it includes four, uh, four full games. Now these are digital games that were released uh, through Sony. These are exclusive to Sony, and were released on the PSN. And they are When Vikings Attack, Sound Shapes, Tokyo Jungle, and Fat Princess. Now I have Fat Princess and When Vikings Attack. Because I remember getting a win Vikings attack. Excuse me, I think it was a cross buy, or at, at least I have the Vita version because Caitlin wanted to play it. Right, my wife. And of course, I do. I do believe I have Fat Princess via the Plus. Um, either or, but these games, um, when Vikings attack, is one to four players unite the townsfolk and fight the Viking invasion. And it is like a little group. It's like a thing where you have to like uh, on the Vita. I remember you're like moving people around. Sound shapes is play, compose, and share your in in in, in a unique platform where your actions make music. It's one player. Tokyo Jungle. Hunt your way to the top of Tokyo's post-apocalyptic food chain. Interesting. And Fat Princess is online. I I don't know if uh, I have no idea if these. Servers are still online, probably not, because it's PS3. Right. Um, but Fat Princess is 1 to 32 players online. Damn. And rescue your princess in this comic medieval battle. Basically, what you have to do in Fat Princess, you have their princess and they have yours. You have to feed their princess to make her fatter and harder to move. While you have to go and rescue your princess and drag her back to your castle. The one, <laughs> the one that gets your the princess back is the is, is the winner. So I'm not seeing it on here at all. A volume two? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I see people talking about it, but I don't see any official. Yeah, I don't know what year this was released. Uh, it's, it's got like a, it's got a <coughs> sticker on it. Uh, 
in the corner, so I really can't uh, see a year. But, but the other uh, big online PSN collection that is labeled Best of PlayStation Network is, of course, the Journey collection. Right. It has Journey, Flow, and Flower, and I have that. So now I have this to kind of go along with that. And for, you know, here I am thinking $4, a dollar per game for, I mean... I, I've never played Sound Shapes, which sounds interesting and intriguing. I've never played Tokyo Jungle, which sounds, you know, it says fight your way to the top of the food chain, and, and it's this little, like, puppy lap dog, that, this little ankle yeah. biter. Kind of reminds me of Copper, in a way. <laughs> uh, your old dog. But I enjoyed the Vikings Attack, and I enjoyed Fat Princess when I played it. To get a physical copy of this for less than the sticker price. Yeah. Can't beat that. You know, uh, I'm a really cheap collector when I can, and you can't get much cheaper than that. I love getting physical copies of download only games. All right. I went out of my way uh, to get the I Am Setsuna physical copy, which is completely playable on the Switch in in English. You know, I um, I went out of my way to get the Resident Evil PS3 version back before they released a physical copy of their digital release of the HD remake of Resident Evil. Right. Uh, because right. when they released the the Resident Evil Zero HD version, they did a a, a dual thing on on for for PS4. Which is cool now, though, because because of that Capcom Humble Bundle, I now have the PS4 digital version of Resident Evil HD. Nice. Which I mean, it sucks that it, it sucks that it included Code Veronica X HD instead of Zero, because I like right. Zero more than the, than I liked Chronicles or you know, Veronica Code Veronica. But it is what it is. I, I couldn't say no to getting the PS4 version of RE HD, you know, remake. Because it's, because then I'll be able to to stream that one day, and before we continue on to your pickup, um, I I'll, I'll talk about what I've been playing because I'm still playing Final Fantasy VII on stream over on Twitch and on the and of course the archives go up every single Friday on on our YouTube channel. You're going to get a new episode of me playing through FF7, going through the story, going through moments, and just. You know, talking through it and having fun. And also, uh, just the other day, I was a little critical of it. Of uh, one of my favorite games of all time. But I'm also playing The Last of Us. I'm almost done with that. I'm a couple more chapters away from being done with that. And I'm playing that wrestling game. And you'll be able to find... you uh, Mondays and Fridays is when I'm trying to trying to stream. So if you follow us on Twitch and on Twitter, you'll know when I stream. So those are the games that I've been playing. You've been playing Octopath. And you got something to make playing Octopath a little bit more comfortable. Yes. So I've been debating on this for a while. And I wanted to pick it up used. But I really only wanted to buy it from Replay. Used. This Replay, that is. Um, so the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Uh, one of the best feeling controllers I've ever had in my hands. To me, still, the GameCube controller is the best, but I have not played extensively with this controller. I liked what I played with it over at your place and when Rob was here. And so I was playing Octo last night, and my I have fairly, not really big hands, but they're long, long fingers. So I'm playing it, and I'm actually using the buttons right at the bend of my thumb. Because my hands just don't fit that cradle right. So I went ahead and it was hurting my thumb. So I went ahead and picked that up. And when I put it on the thing, I held it. And I was like, God, man, that's a good feeling controller. For 70 bucks, though, it hurts the pocketbook. But freaking GameStop's like, I'm like, so how much is your used when you go $65? I was like, for that, I'll just buy a brand new one. But... GameStop's return policy sucks. Disc replays is 14 days, hands down. If you if it doesn't work or you, you something's wrong with it, bring it back in. We'll give you your money back, in-store credit only, or you'll get a brand new one. Or, if you want, you can get put on a list, and the second one of those comes in, we put it aside for you, and it's yours. You just come in and pick it up. We go through the process, and you try if it. Again, we'll do it again until they've been super good to us. They're, they're, they're yeah, they're they are awesome with their customer service. People and, and for us, though, I mean, we're in there all the time, so dude, they, they know, know us. us. And yeah. he's like, he's like, man, it's been a while since I've seen you. I'm, I'm glad to see you today. He says, it's been a while. What have you been up to? Just, just 
shooting the breeze while I'm paying for it. Yeah, like when I'm in there, the the guys that are always in there, like yeah. the guys that were in there today. Zach. The, uh, uh, he always says hi to me. Hey, man. How's or it Jack. Going? Jack. I'm sorry. Hey, you know, it's good to see you. You know, so like, you know, those guys, they treat us well. And I am not, I don't think twice about giving them my business. You know, unfortunately, Tyler's uh-huh. had a few bad experiences with them over the years. I'm wondering if it depends on who he dealt with. Again, I, I don't know. But there's a few in there that I'm not super fond of. If Jack's in there, I, I like working with Jack because he's super nice. And, uh, Jack and then the other dude. The other dude. Yeah, that was, that was there. there today. Yeah, uh, he's awesome too. I can't remember his name, unfortunately, but he's the guy that set aside that GTA thing for me just because I, we had this little screw up with. Oh, this isn't London. This is the original. My bad. I'm like, hey, no problem. Yeah, and they and that's one thing is like we were when we looked through the boxes and stuff. I can't tell you how many times that they've called me and said, "Hey, I know you were looking at JRPGs. We just got like 20 of them in." And then he'll on the phone. He just names them. I haven't been in there. He'll just name them off. I'm like, yeah, I want that one and that one and that one. And he'll okay, they're yours and puts them aside and Mm -hmm. never even puts them on the shelf. Right. Because that one time when we purchased your two E's games, he called us back. And said, hey, we just got a bunch more in. Are you interested? And we came back in that day because I told you. I was like, hey, he called me and told me. We came back in that day and you picked up another JRPG, I believe, that day. But the, uh, dude, like, they're, I can't. They're awesome. Like, trust me. Like, I, this isn't paid promotion. They're not paying me to say this. No. The, the, this is just a good customer. And, you know, good customer uh, feeling for me. It's like, I feel like I've been treated well by these guys. But uh, I've never even had a member. I brought that one game in that was past time to return, and they re-extended my, what was it that I had? I bought something, but he gave me like two months because it was being iffy. And even iffy on theirs, and they're like, eh, let's just go ahead and give you a new one, and then I'll just go ahead and extend it for two more months just in case. See, for me, like, uh, awesome. the only time I've ever had a game not work from there was the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. And you got lucky they had one without a box. Or actually it had a box. But it didn't have the manual. And Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, the one that I had was complete. And uh, it was he basically said that's right after they got their surfacer, their little disc surfacer. Yeah. And he said you got to be careful with the GameCube discs because it'll eat right through it because it has a set time and for the larger discs, but like if you put the GameCube disc in a smaller disc, it's just going to sand it till it goes right through the protective layer. Yep. So uh, he looked at it and goes, "Yeah, this looks like it was sanded too much." He goes, because you like looking at it, you first look, you couldn't tell anything wrong. Like was actually wrong with it, but like apparently there was. He tried it out in there. He said it wasn't working, and 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 I brought it in well within, like because you know oh, me, yeah, I yeah. buy like I'll be honest with you, like. Now that I have my PS3 out there, I might put this in either tonight or tomorrow just to make sure it works. Right. But normally, like, I had this full-blown system set up for when I would buy games, and I would buy a stack of games where I would come home, test them, clean them, archive them, put them up. I had a, I had this full, yeah. full-blown full system about how I did stuff. I, I even had stacks of games. Uh, places, uh, places in my room where I would stack games here, these haven't been tested. These have been tested, need cleaned. These have been cleaned, need sorted, right? Or need archived? Yeah. Need archived. Well, it, it, usually I would like. Well, you had to archive them through your game through my, eye. Yeah, and usually I would do that when I cleaned them. So. Right. But and yeah, I, I the, he goes, yeah, we actually have another copy. That blew me away. Number one, they even had another copy of that. Yeah. Game because GameCube collecting is so sparse in our area. Unless you are some of the places where we don't want to go, that end up getting some stuff. Bitch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I get to call her a bit, I'm going to. Um, I hate that woman to death. But anyways, uh, yeah, you know, he he extended it, and it, you know that one worked just fine. And I asked if I could say, "Hey, man, do you mind if I keep this case that I already have? I like it's a better condition, and it has, and I have the manual." He goes, "Sure." He gave me the disc, popped it in there. He goes, "Yep, you know, bon, they're, you know, bon voyage." They're but, they're awesome. I mean, I don't know how other disc replays are, but our experience here. Is amazing, dude. Our guys run a good store. They, they run a great. I mean, they're they're on top of it. I mean, actually, I, did I tell you that I was trapped in there once? They had a storm and a tornado went out, and they refused. Oh, yeah. They refused to let anyone out. They said, "No, you're not leaving." They don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. And I, some guy came in and stole a bunch of. <laughs> he stole a bunch of the uh, the cases, 
it, we were all sitting like behind the counter. The doors are all open, so we're all the way in the back. Yeah, where the they have their own bathroom and they have right. a storage thing. The, so we're sitting back here, and I'm watching. And <laughs> there's like I'm talking to Jack and the other guy. <laughs> this dude walks in, grabs a bunch of cases, and leaves. And everybody he starts laughing. He's like. The, the, the idiot just took a bunch of cases. There's nothing in them. <laughs> I don't know why he did that. But anyways, you know, they didn't have to do that. No. He's like, hey, severe weather, tornado does touch down a couple miles away. Everybody's back here. Well, I want to leave. You need to come back here. Like, we, we're trying to keep you guys safe. Just just hang out for a while. And we just hung out back here. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, dude. Total, totally nice guys. Like, Absolutely nice guys. So we were talking about, you know, Switch. You got your new thing and new stuff. We also mentioned Prime, and well, this is Prime Week, and there's there's a lot there's some pretty good sales going on, man. Oh yeah, especially for your Switch memory cards, these little micro SDs, right? So I'm trying not to buy one. Oh, dude, it's hard. So uh, while supplies last, you can get a Sandisk 64 gigabyte micro SD card for. Thirteen ninety nine, for what size? Sixty four. That's an awesome price. One hundred and twenty eight gigabyte for twenty six thirty six. One hundred and twenty eight. Is that the five uh, X or ten X speed? They are all the micro SD XC. Uh, yeah, the the higher graded ones. Uh, Two hundred and fifty six gigabytes for seventy three fifty six. Or. Your trash runs at 5 o'clock in the afternoon? Some of them do. Um, usually mine's done by the time I leave for work. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if our microphones are picking that up, but I heard that earlier, and I'm like, I wonder what that was. Was that a school bus? I don't know. It's summertime. And then it got closer, and I looked out the window, and there's D&D trash service. Yeah, that's <laughs> not ours. We don't use them. Anyways, a uh, 400-gigabyte card for one thirty nine ninety nine. For a 400 gigabyte card. And uh, so, like, that is not bad at all. In fact, they even had a little bundle deal where you could get a Switch, 64 gigabyte card, and a $20 eShop card for $300 the yeah. ba- for the base price of the Switch. That is an unbelievable deal. Did you say the 200 gigabyte one? Yeah. Yeah, I said 43 that bucks. 43 bucks for the 250? So 200. For the two hundred and fifty six, yeah, that, seventy three dollars. Yeah, that's yeah, that's and the, the four hundred gig is one hundred and thirty nine. But yeah. for the two hundred gigabyte in stock right now, forty three dollars. Now the one twenty eight is out of stock. Mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna buy one of these because that's fifty. That's forty eight percent off on that two hundred gig. Yeah. And it's a Scandisk Ultra. Sandisk. Sandisk. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said Scandisk. I don't know. You always say Scandisk. I don't know why. I don't know why either. Also, Just like the... today, I called a, a grasshopper a cricket, and I'm looking right at it, and it's green. I'm like, it's cricket. There's a cricket. And he kind of looked, and Cameron looked at me, and I was like, well, it's about ready to be a cricket. I should change my thing, because it's getting ready to go <laughs> in the oven, and it's going to be black. <laughs> so, uh, one last thing for the Switch before we move on to some other topics. Um, South Park to stick a truth coming to Switch this year. That's pretty cool. Of course, they they already have the fractured butthole that came out uh, like, like a little while ago, and apparently, uh, it is going to come to uh come to the Switch via digital. We don't know if there's a physical f- price yet. Um, but if it's gonna it, since it's an older game, they may price it at like twenty bucks. Right, and since that is the game before Fractured, you get the full experience by playing both games. That's awesome because literally, like, you can play Fractured without having played Stick of Truth, but Stick of Truth was my surprise like game of the year for me. Right, like, like that year, that year I did give it to Dragon Age Inquisition because I loved the game, but like one that was like came out of left field for me that was had no reason being as good as it was. Was stick of truth, yeah. I had so much fun with that game. Speaking of something that was like better than 
better than what it deserved to be. Excuse me. I showed you something when we got back to your house today. Yes. And that was the Uncharted fan film that Which was released the... just the other day. Yesterday. Yeah, on Monday. Monday. And, of course, it stars Nathan Fillion and a few others, which I, I, have no, I don't know their names. I'm sorry. But this was a complete non-associated with Sony, Naughty Dog, n- 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 like none of those people involved in this. This is a complete fan film. And... It was awesome. Like... <laughs> it's just me. It was awesome. A lot of times with fan films, they can go a couple different... You can tell they're a fan film, right? Right. You know, lower budget, lower things. And there, if you look at this thing, you could probably nitpick a few things that kind of show you, yeah, this is a lower budget thing. But this, they were able to hide and mask the sheer, like, those imperfections to a point where this thing almost looks like a damn big multi-million dollar production. Yes. In spots. Like, I cannot gush about that enough. I watched that yesterday. <laughs> Bless you, man. Sorry. Man, that probably just blew our listeners' ears out. Yeah, I apologize. Better mark that down, 35 minutes. Yes, yes, take that out, please, and all of this. <laughs> Woo! That one hurt. That hurt. It sounded like it hurt. It did. I'm going to order this for 20 bucks because I have a bunch of Prime points, so I'm buying it. Or, it was uh, using the card. It's $19 for a 200 gigabit. Gigabit? Gigabit? <laughs> gigabit. Yeah, get me a gigabit. But she can yell at me later. Like the there's one thing in this that I I w- I started to say it earlier. And that was the there's a shot after he jumps out of the window and gets back up that the camera kind of comes behind him and the little black bars go away like the cutscenes ending and now it's gameplay. I thought that was amazing. Uh there's a, I I loved that because there was a scene do you remember the Hitman movie they made a long time ago? Um, it, it, it wasn't great. It was okay. Certain parts of it were really good, mm-hmm. but it didn't incorporate. It didn't really make you feel like you were watching a Hitman anything. Right. It was just him kind of running around, and he fought a bunch of other Hitmen. That is not what that is about. Um, there's one scene in that where he's walking down a hallway, and like how they got him walking down the hallway in the camera layout and the way he was walking matched the game. Like it looked like for like a split second. Holy crap. They right. took that right from the game. And it was like a little wink. And that's what I liked about the whole uncharted thing. It's like, cause he already had the little fight scene, you know, before, and then he kind of jumped out and they did the, like, like, like just a little quick little firing, uh, thing with the gun. And they did that whole little, when he, Jumped out the window. Oh yeah, yeah. And they and they took that away and made it look like for a second that you were like watching a scene from the game, and then it like then he goes into cover and then you know he runs out of ammo. <laughs> and I love the look at that. He's like you piece of crap, and th- he literally throws it. And then he makes this very odd face. <laughs> it's like it's very odd, and then he kind of grins because his Sully Sully yeah. comes and helps him, but no. For a fan-made movie, for him to get those people, Mm -hmm. I know that the blonde girl, I don't know her name, and I apologize, I know she's a fairly large actor, actress. I've seen her face somewhere before. I've seen her in some stuff. But, but of course, to get Nathan Fillion, the guy that, like, fans have wanted to play Drake for years, you know? Yeah. And, of course, that's not the direction that Sony's going with their movies. They're going with Tom Holland, a younger story. Sure, okay. I'll, I'll bite. The The one reason why is because I like him as, as a kid. Yeah. You know? Uh, he's great as, as Spider-Man, and I kind of feel like, in a way, he would play that young version of Drake. Like, you know, in that very kind of, like, nervous, always kind of talking, cracking jokes kind of thing. Right. You know, I think he would do well with it. But... Fillion did a great job. Yes. With every line, he's just kind of sitting there, and he's like, yeah, so that is a compass. You want me to show how to work? Because this guy, we need to find this guy another haircut. <laughs> Take that, that back to the that, 90s. Maybe, we can, maybe he can direct <laughs> us, you know, uh, direct us to a place where we can, like, 
Like, cause uh, get this guy a haircut that didn't like go out in the nineties. Yeah. And yeah, no, like it was perfect. Like he sounded like Drake. He even looked like Drake. He looked like when Drake. They, the way they did his hair. Uh, it, it, the only thing that you could say is maybe he's just a little older than what maybe he should. Like maybe if they would have done this seven years ago when they originally were like, Hey, he needs to do this. You know? Yeah, it would have been perfect. But I mean, he still looked great. He acted fi- like the, even the guy that did Sully, he fit right in. You know, everything fit. It, it honestly, it, it, for a film, had the kind of tone that I would want from an Uncharted film, where it had like where it's it's got to be entertaining. Uh, what you play in the game, and then what you see on television, like there's always a big difference, right? In in like quality and tone and everything. I did not go see that new Tomb Raider movie. That looked like they took a pretty much verbatim the tone from the new Tomb Raider games. They pretty much took the game and made it the well, movie. Like, I haven't watched it, but I don't know how well they did with that. But like, even though this that down there did not feel at, all the time one to one with Uncharted, with the whole like him being like tied up, that didn't feel one to one. But it felt like man, if they were to make Uncharted into, into a movie, it would be like that. It would be more funny. It would. It would find humor in situations and, and, and little things because that's what Nate does. Right. He, when he's in extreme duress, he's cracking jokes because that's how he deals with stress. Right. And when he's getting beat up in that chair and he's like, just hold on. Wait a minute. Just, just, just I don't mean to like just take over this you know, and, and tell you how to do your job. But shouldn't you be asking questions in between the punches? <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> you know? Hilarious. Oh, the best part was whenever the guy walked in and he goes, yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, this is El Tigre? This oh, is El Tigre. You had me. I was actually scared for a minute. <laughs> yeah, it is this little bitty short guy. And then in the middle of the fight, <laughs> like towards the end, the little guy's like scraping and fighting. He's holding and back. And he's holding one. back with the hand. He's like, stop, hey, stop, stop. Calm down. Calm down. I told you to calm down. <laughs> it's um, just. Perfect. When when uh, when when El Tigre is walking up to him, he goes, "Hey, there, little guy. What do you like? What do you want to be when you grow up?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he goes, it, "It's perfect." He goes, "I consider this a pleasure. There are a lot of men who would pay money, a lot of money, to be alone, alone with, with you." you. Uh, awkward. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was on point, man. Everything- Every single bit of that. Was on point. To me, that first, it's 15 minutes long for you guys that's listening and haven't seen it yet. And that is a perfect, it is perfect setup to start a movie. Like that 15 minutes is your good intro of he gets caught on purpose to get into the house. Well, and they already have the, the thing that like they that, know that he, that he right. took something. So obviously you would start it. Like with that other, with them stealing the artifact from even from, not even that from that you, auction. Be, well, I mean, to, like this would be like scene, like uh, you know, a scene little, two. Well, like the next big kind yeah. of thing with him getting caught. Maybe a fifth. Well, I don't know. It depends because I would like to do this and maybe do like a flashback of him going and and getting the uh, the bracelet is what mm-hmm. it is. It's a bracelet. Um, but I would want them to spend more time on him doing the hunt than acquiring the information for the hunt. Well, uh, well, because even the game's got to do that. You got to start right, somewhere. Right. So that's why I would make the opening cinematic a big heist with them getting that, and then I yeah. would make the next thing where they got to like so a seven, like, seven, ten minute. So like, bit. It's like maybe like during the opening credits, and then a little bit after that would be the little heist thing. Where you would have like this big action thing, and then how he gets caught, and, and that well, and then they would like figure out that 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 he needs to get caught, yeah, and then they would lead into this scene, because like the little scene after that, uh, after the whole action scene, when 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 Nate and Sully meet up with Elena, that right there is, is like a cut scene from a, from Uncharted, like not literally they didn't pull that from the game. But it literally feels like you're sitting there watching a cutscene after you played through a level and I can uncharted it and it's setting up the next level. Right. Like it's tonally, the things that are said, the things that happen, you know, everything. Everything from the from her because Elena, she's like this travel agent or some some that's how they end up getting to a lot of places. Right. Like uh in, into the second or third game. And she she makes a remark about the Rena about the Rena Jeep. She goes, can you guys ever bring these things back the way that they, the way that you took them out? And he goes, we got insurance. insurance. You got the insurance, right? He goes, thought you did. And he just says, rats. <laughs> like instantly, <laughs> like, ah, right, here we go again. 
But then, of course, then uh, just like in the games, Elena's like, oh, you guys are always up to something. Why are you guys trying to drag me into this? And yet she always gets dragged into as far as like, because then she's into this kind of stuff too, but she's always the one trying to be the voice of reason. And then by the end of it, she's like tagging right along. <laughs> yeah, she's she's right in the thick of things. But. And so, no, I I know that Sony's not going to do anything with this. Um the the way that they ended it, the way that they set it up for them to go to the Philippines to continue the hunt, yeah, it's like oh, let there be a second part to this. I know there's already people that are doing reaction videos going, okay, so this is awesome, and you need to make another section. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it sucks that for this guy, he's not going to make any money off this. No, he's got when he we can't. watched it, it was 1.6 million views in one day. Dude, like I saw it yesterday, uh, shortly after it was uploaded, it had a couple hundred thousand. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then today, when I went to show you, it had, uh, you know, over a million more than that. I mean, it, it's it's blowing up, uh, and it's going to continue to rise. I have never seen ever a video game property, uh, like done in a movie type setting that was that good. Oh, I agree. As far as like, I agree. You know, because like, easy case in point, and you can even argue that they are two different things. The Resident Evil series, not even the same. You know, not even the same. Right. Um. There, uh, the first Silent Hill movie they came out with is, I felt like that got some of the feel, but it wasn't that great of a movie. It was okay. Eh. Again, how many movies have been created out of video game properties that have been actually good? Right, and you're gonna be scraping to find anything because, as I said, Hitman, you know, Advent you know, Children. Yeah, you know, well, and that's different. You're talking about live action. I'm talking about Hollywood directors and uh, studios saying we need to make something that appeals to the mass. Like Advent Children was made by Square for Final Fantasy VII fans. I know. Yeah, so like that doesn't <laughs> count. I know. I know it doesn't count. But like, when you're gonna throw it in there. But uh, and then the same thing with the King's Lave. Watch the movie first, you know, aka Watch the movie first. Uh, for you know for FF fifteen. But you know when you're talking about like think think back to the nineties. It's a hard time. I understand. Yeah. Think back. It's a confusing time for. Think back to Street Fighter, the movie. That was a horrible movie. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so horrible. You like it though? Another one. And I think you're gonna ready to say it. Super Mario Brothers. Yep. Super Mario Brothers. Mortal Kombat. I to be honest though, I liked Super Mario. <laughs> I, 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 I own it. I own it. There's a there is a there are parts of, of the Street Fighter movie that I like. Yeah, there's not much in that. I, I like. like Zangief in that movie. <laughs> Cause he's a big stupid oaf. Yeah. And when when they're about ready to blow up this tent that they're in and like they're they're getting shown on TV what like what's happening to them outside <laughs> and to save them from getting blown up, then he yells, Quick, change channel <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then like like at some point, like Bison yeah. makes this speech and Zangief's like Zeth was beautiful. <laughs> like yeah. he's getting all touched up. And at the end, he ends up like joining the good guys or whatever. Yeah. And he ends up he 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 tries to give Guile a thumbs up, and he's a thumbs in the middle. Guile's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. It is. Oh man. I also I do I actually did like the first Mortal Kombat movie. You know what? I I don't have very many complaints other than when he goes into the other world and pulls reptile out of the statue. That was terrible. Reptile. But other uh, than that, the I, fights were good. Like Goro was, was a puppet. He looked. It, it, now, if you did that that movie today, it I mean, would work. Well, I mean, okay. Well, and, and and they're actually doing a new Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, like Goro was like an animatronic puppet. Yeah, and it worked. It, it, you know, like, like the Scorpion stuff. There are aspects about that movie that I think that that I think really work. But I I think where it falls apart is that they're trying to turn this into a story that could that could be comprehensible for a movie. Yeah, and it's difficult to do sometimes for Mortal Kombat. 
I didn't like do this. a bad job. The second movie sucked. Yes. You want to hear something? I went to the theater to see the second movie. Oh, man. Yeah. Imagine my surprise when Johnny Cage gets killed in the first two minutes. Not even Johnny Cage. It's some other guy. It's playing Johnny Cage. Yeah, when they, he was the actor. They, yeah, they couldn't even get the same actor. And it, they, they couldn't even get the same actress to play Sonya Blade. Yeah. Different, 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 different actress. Different actor to play Jax. They got like Turbo from American Gladiators, <laughs> which I actually like. Like, I, I actually liked him better. But then to to replace Christopher Lambert Highlander, who played Raiden, who got it, man. Like, yeah, I actually did. I actually liked him in that role, even though he didn't do much. And now you now you bring in like Dexter's dad from like the show Dexter. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know the actor's name. I actually like him and other stuff that I've seen him in. But like, I'm like that. He's raid now. Anyway, we digress. I want them to do more with this Philly and Uncharted thing. Yes. Philly and teased that last week, and I'm like, oh, was he just trying to like prod a little bit? No, he actually did something, and they released it, and it's amazing. One of the best things I've seen. It's one of the best fan made movies I've ever seen. One and another one that we can argue is re- is probably the best is the uh, Voldemort one. The only problem with that whole entire thing was the voice was not did not match the movie. So when they talked, it was behind. A se- it wasn't like oh okay okay it wasn't like a half a second or a second where you're like oh okay it was like. Three seconds. Okay, because I the way that you said that it made it seem like the guy's voice for Voldemort wasn't the same as the actual voice. Well, it's not going to be because it's a young Voldemort story. Well, we'll see. Okay, because I, I, the the actual audio track was off. The same. audio track was off significantly. Okay, and actually, everybody that I read said, "How could you like this is awesome, but how could you mess up the audio so much?" I wonder if anyone's tried to fix it. I bet somebody has. But it was a really good movie. Like, we bought YouTube Red for that because, you know, Joanna and Harry Potter. Yeah. And she loved it. She was just like, it's so hard to watch because it's so far off. You know, I actually uh, was watching, I ended up clicking on, you know, going down, going down the dark hole of YouTubes. Somehow you can just end up clicking on videos. And next thing you know, you're like, how did I get on this? Also, I was told that we need to watch Cobra Kai on YouTube Red. Mm-hmm. My cousin, Brandon, <laughs> surprise, mm-hmm. says that it for him, that's what put Red on the map. And for us, obviously, it's a Voldemort movie, but he said that was amazing. It's basically like 20 years later. Yeah, and, Karate Kid. And uh, his, what's his name? His rival. Yeah. I I know you're talking about yeah, but it's his perspective of right. So that's pretty cool. Um. Anyway, what I was gonna say, I I, I, I got that off. I went down this dark hole on YouTube and ended up watching like a couple of Harry Potter things. Right. I ended up hearing some stuff that I can kind of forgot about because they're not talked about in the movies. Right. Because I read the books. Two thousand nine, two thousand ten, somewhere around there. I think I think it was 2009 because I was still a temporary on day shift where we work. Right. And uh, I what got me to finally read them was that I saw the sixth movie and actually liked it. Up until that point, I she made me watch all the movies. Said the Half Blood Prince. Yeah. Yeah. And I I didn't really care for them. I was picking them apart. I liked the third one, which Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is probably still my favorite book out of the whole series. Um. I think Joanna is starting to like that one more. Prisoner Azkaban. Mine, my favorite one is um, Order of the Phoenix. You, you know what's funny? That was my least favorite book out of all of them. Really? The book is, as we're going off into Harry Potter tangent. Yeah. Um, the book was very like, let's keep repeating the same thing. Just to f- I feel like she wanted to write the longest book she'd written. And so like some of the things that they're doing for Harry to serve his detention, like they condense it a lot in the movie. Yeah. Um, but 
so like after seeing the sixth film in the theater, I went with her to go see it because she wanted to go see it. So she made me watch the other ones, and I'm like, it's all right. Right. I actually was in like I, I sat there and I actually enjoyed it. I'm like, man, this is a good tone. Overall, I'm really liking this. And then, of course, the big thing at the end of what happens at the end of the sixth one. Right. It's like that really sets the stage. I'm like, wow, okay, I'm in. So I'm asking her questions. The 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 thing with my wife is she'll like something and be into it, but is not into it the same way that I get into things. I'm very much a lore person. Why is this? Why is this? Why is this? Why is that? Why is this? How does this universe work? You know? Right. And then it gets to a point where she is like, I'm like wrapping stuff around her head. And she's like, I just, just read the damn book. And I'm like, I don't want to read the book. That's why I have you. That's, that's how I am. I'm exactly that way. I'll, I'll point out stuff and I'm like, why is that? And then she just, see, but Joanna loves that because she'll just rattle it off. And see, it got to a point where finally I read all the books, one book a week. Until I got to the last book, and I think it was like a week and a half, because I actually, uh, I think the sixth movie came out in July. I don't know. Of 2009. Uh, early July, maybe even late June, somewhere. I know that after I would read the book, because I started them in like beginning of August. Right. Uh, after, uh, well, maybe it was like more than a book a week then, because I, I finished them around Labor Day weekend so maybe i started at the at the end of july but i remember i would come home from work and just, just lay in bed and and read and i finally read it and i i watched a video and i'm like oh crap yeah man i forgot about that and i was telling her and she's like he did you know whatever it was and i'm like yeah she, they i i didn't i i didn't know that like, huh. how did you not know that she goes, I read them a long time ago, but I didn't like, like what, like what she's retained is what is, is what in the movies, right? The big mm -hmm. moments that they've transposed because some of the movies trans or books transpose well into the movies. I would say the first three movies are probably the most accurate. And uh, well, to a degree, yes, but well, they also didn't put in the, the, the freaking, what's the name of the ghost that hides everybody's belongings and, and oh, does yeah. mischief. I can't name it. Yeah. The name. Yeah. Oh. Joanna would sit here and smack me. Yeah. She'd walk out of the room and, Psh, you should know this. Uh, yeah, they didn't put him in. But in any of them. Right. Other than a hint where, um, what's her name? The little blonde girl, the uh, Luna. Luna. Luna's like, somebody is taking all my stuff and hiding it through the castle. Wink. Well, there's a wink of that, but... Uh, like the students would also do that to her to pick yeah. on her. Yeah. And well, well, then she thought it was like Nargles or something like that, some yeah. other like mystical thing. But anyway, I really feel like the we first suspect the, Nargles, the so first two movies, <laughs> which were both directed by Chris Columbus, yeah, are the ones that are the absolute closest like to like the source material. Like I, I feel like those are pretty well taken over. Because because then I feel personally, <laughs> bless you once again. I feel like the Goblet of Fire should have been two movies. Oh yes, because I feel like so much happens in Goblet of Fire that they condense it into one movie. So in Goblet of Fire is Cedric's dad is completely different mm -hmm. than in the book. Yeah, because he is an asshole in the book. Yeah, so I think that's cool. I mean, they did it more to be to give you the sympathy role of, yeah, of yeah. Hit, you know Cedric dying and stuff but right well okay but like I would watch the movies and then we actually went to the theater to go see the sixth movie again after I watched after I read the book and there was like nobody in there like it was it was like well, yeah we're still showing this like twice a day you know right right near the end of it showing and then I read the the last book and in some ways like they they split the last book into two movies, right? In some ways, they get that that pretty good as far as book to film ratio, right? But you know, in other ways, they don't because one thing that I really don't like is that the second book and movie introduced Dobby, right? And then he sprinkled it in kind of throughout the entire series, right? And then in the seventh one, he has a big role. Well, they in the movies he's in the second one, and then you don't hear from him at all until the seventh movie, right? And that bugs me. That really bugs me. 
why did I go on this tangent? Is because I actually had, I, I, I have them, and I had to struggle and fight and work for two hours last night to get these audiobooks. I have the audiobooks, and I'm going to listen to them again. Uh, because, like, so all of a sudden, after watching two freaking videos, I've had nothing but this, this plot stuff in my, I'm about trying to remember stuff. So now I'm re-listening to the entire audiobooks. I found audiobooks online, and they're not read, and they're not read by the same dude that I listened to them. Like, because after I read the books, I listened to the books twice all the way through. Huh. Which the first book is eight hours long. I was getting ready to say, Joanna's. That's how she's been getting through Game of Thrones, and they're like twenty hours or Dude, something ridiculous. I I'll do that with Game of Thrones, but I'm probably gonna wait to do that until after they wrap up. I cannot wait. For that next year, they haven't even said when yet. I don't even care. Yeah. The next year rolls around, and you're gonna see me rocking back and forth in my chair. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. Cause I want to know what happens. I have my theories. So far, I've been right. Yes, I'm not boasting. I'm not saying that. Blah blah blah. I I actually guess majority of it right that what would be the best ending, what would be the ultimate greatest thing, Daenerys, and um. Snow getting together. I did guess that I think that they might be related, but I didn't 100% say that's the way it was. But I'm, I want to know what happens because in the lore, the books that we have, you have to plunge the sword into the one you love to turn it into the, damn it, whatever sword that is. I cannot think of its name. The only one that can kill the Night King. You have to kill your loved one with it. I'm wondering if that'll happen. And what if he does that and when he stabs the Night King with it, the Night King stabs him? He is the only rightful heir to the throne. I know. And then his sister gets it. Sansa. Plot twist. Anyways. <laughs> that's what she's always wanted. You're not Sansa. Yeah, Sansa. Sansa, but just imagine. Just imagine. If fucking Cersei keeps it. People will be pissed. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Riots in the streets. Everybody hates that bitch. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. Anyway. Yeah, uh, another tangent there. Yeah. We're well, on books, podcast about books. We're, don't be stepping into Joanna's hey, realm. Don't hey, be stepping into hey, Joanna's realm. Hey, she ain't here, man. She can't stop us. That's right. But, yeah, I mean, we didn't really have a whole lot to talk about this week as far as video games go. No. Um, Not a whole lot of new news. No. Um, there's, a, there's a supposed Nintendo Direct coming, possibly. Let me double check and see. Let me double check and see when that is. I got to make sure to be on the mic, dummy. Um, it, I thought it was coming up and possibly this week. This week or next. But I have no actual like that. That, that July, is, July twenty second. So, so the next week. Or it says here, let me see. Hold on. So the next Wednesday? Um, it just says, it, all it has is leaks and rumors. It doesn't have... Yeah, I mean, it's not confirmed yet at all. Uh, this is a... Of course, we have uh, San Diego Comic-Con coming up. So they think that there may be something... Like, you know, I'm going to their Nintendo dot com direct. I mean, because they haven't said anything, but like, there's, I mean, there there are some rumors and, and you know, and speculation about that. So, yeah, I think that's going to do it for us this week, though. I really don't have anything else to talk about. I don't either. But uh, yeah, good. I'll have more after I get some more Octopath in Octopath. me. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what, what's. Well, that's happening in, in the world of gaming. We'll see what all kind of new deals we got going on on uh, on Prime Day. There's a $150 Switch. Not Switch, I'm sorry, 3DS, the uh, Super Nintendo 3DS. Yeah. I say, $150 Switch, I'll buy it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll buy uh, that for a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's the uh, Super Nintendo one that comes with a uh, Super Mario Kart pre-installed. Um, so it's, you know, it's, if I were if I were to buy another one, that would be the one that I would want. If, oh, if the I'm Mario get, Kart 8 Deluxe. Well, no, 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 no. It's the oh, never mind, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, come on, not switch. 
No, it's the 3DS Super Nintendo. It has a Super Nintendo copy because the new 3DS and new 2DS can play Super Nintendo uh, the virtual console stuff. Right. So, uh, I which I have I have yet to even capitalize on that. I I don't even know what's all on there anymore. Like, like the, like the last thing. Like I'm not even worried about looking about it this week. But oh, there is something I want to talk about for next week. All right. That does involve the 3DS. Oh, and we didn't. We actually missed something. We did, and I need to go back to it, don't I? Yes, you the do, poll. before you continue. Yeah, so we did a poll last week. Of course, last week we talked about uh, Xbox Game Pass versus PS Now, PlayStation Now. And, you know, I put a poll up on Twitter, and I'm going to start doing this every single week. So every single week we're going to do a poll, and then uh, but we're going to do it like last week I kind of offset it. So while we did the episode last week and we did the poll, this week we're going to do the poll. We're going to start the poll now, and then next week we're going to talk about it, decide what we think, and then also reveal the poll option. Right. So we're going to kind of correct it. So before we continue on to what I want to, to what I want to do, uh, last week's PS Now versus Xbox Game Pass. Last week we decided us that we thought Xbox Game Pass was the better deal, uh, in in what was better all all as as a service. Uh, the vote is fifty four percent. PS Now, the 46 Xbox Game Pass, uh, right there neck and neck. So thank you guys for voting on our poll. We're going to do that every single week. And next week, guys, we are going to, you know, one of the main topics for next week, along with the other news and other stuff we've been playing and other stuff we've been doing, we're, 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 we're going to be comparing and contrasting the Nintendo 3DS and the PlayStation Vita, two, of, you know, two really awesome handhelds and which I have a lot of love for, and we're going to go through and we're going to talk about, you know, which one do we think is better as far as like, oh, look at game selection, look at price points, look at, uh, look at the eShop, and look at compatibility, all that kind of stuff, you know, and all the pluses and negatives. I think I have an idea of who we would probably select to be the winner in that category. But I definitely still want to have that, that 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 topic of conversation. I want to open up that conversation to each and every one of you, and let you guys vote on our Twitter poll. We really want to start interacting more with you guys. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and do this. Maybe not every single episode have a direct one to one thing, but uh, definitely gonna try and have a poll every single week. So there, we didn't miss it. We talked about it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So I, I'm still looking up the Super Nintendo ones on there. We'll, we'll we'll talk about that next week. We'll talk week. about that next week, yeah. yeah. I'll have it officially pulled up and ready yep. to go. We're, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're actually going to do the homework and be ready to go next week with that. Yes. In- instead of like sitting here on our phones reading the entire list of the Xbox, yeah, Live, or do Xbox that. Game Pass and PS Now Live or anything. No, no, we're, we're, well, we didn't have a whole lot to talk about that week either. So that, that Dude, we actually went for a while. We did go for a while, but that took up a large chunk of that. Well, it took, it, it took a little bit, but not as much as you think. Hmm. Uh, but with that, be that as may next week, 3ds versus PS Vita, you know, I'm going to put that poll up as soon as you guys hear this, it should be live up on the Twitter feed. Go to our, go to our Twitter, twitter.com slash game addicts play. The poll will be, t- the poll will be pinned up top and select. What do you guys think is the better console or the better, ha- or the better handheld, the PS Vita or the, or, or, or the Nintendo 3ds I'm curious to hear what you guys have to think. And also, sh- well, you know, share the poll and comment on it and, you know, tell us, you know, tell us why, you know, like, do you uh, the PS Vita just sucks? You know, it's just a horrible console. Well, okay. Uh, t- then what do you like about it? What do you like about the 3DS? You know, let's have that dialogue and have that con- you know have that conversation. It's very hard for me to not to comment on this, but go ahead. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're gonna... I want I want to put my staple down on the Vita. No, no, but I can't week. do it next week. next week. Next week. So until then, guys, uh, thank you guys for checking us out this week. Thank you. Thanks for coming along and even tangenting us a little bit with some other. Like, we, 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 we tangented into the games, into movies, into books. So we, we kind of. We fully nerded out. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, you know, I mean, there are things that we do nerd out about other than video games, surprisingly. I mean, we both love Game of Thrones. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I love Harry Potter as well. Like, yeah. as well. I'm, I'm really big into the I, I don't have a choice. <laughs> no, no, no. I you, have an entire room to my right that is. Nothing but a Harry Potter. I'm staring at the Gryffindor uh, uh, banner. That's two, like, right like, in this room, four feet away from me. And then you look in there, and you've got a statue of Hedwig, and then a statue of Fox, and you know, I, I buy her a statue every year, something really nice from Harry Potter because it's her favorite thing. And I have a 
uh, Felix. Felicis. Felicis. The luck. The luck. Liquid Liqu- luck. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You even had a you even had a Harry Potter themed wedding. I had it. Well, not really a wedding because it was it, it was, was kind of the way kind it was of themed. But I, I'm my not saying pro- it was hundred percent. My proposal to her was one hundred percent Harry Potter. I'm going to go off on this before we close up. Go. Is that cool? Yeah, go so for it. So what I did was, my wife's big into Harry Potter, so we got her her robe. And I had this plan, and my cousin was was really awesome and helped me out with it. So I took, I bought her a trunk that looks like Harry's trunk from the first movie. And I tied it up with fishing line on a pergola we had outside. So it looked... Like it was floating. And inside, I bought her. I had her exact wand customly made from a wand shop that now you cannot put in an order. They're completely overrun. But they designed it, cut it, made it for painted it. Everything. It looks awesome. Had that in there with her letter to Hogwarts and all that stuff. And then I <laughs> dressed up as Voldemort. We had the one, so I dressed up as him, and I proposed to her because she's a little on the dark side <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. Like, you have to know her, but she likes the dark side of things. So I did that, and it was pretty good. I videotaped it and never fully edited it out. I should do that. Yeah. Yeah, we actually should. We should actually finish that up. That way we can you know, have that done. But yeah, I, I made a little sign out in the door and everything. It was fun. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it was, it was, it was really creative. And then you even had, I remember there was a whole, you had like a custom uh, box made for the wand, but it didn't fit right. Yeah. So, well, I had it made for the wand, but I didn't have the wand in there. So, actually, Rob's father-in-law made the box for me stained it, everything, and then I took a piece of foam and put it in there and put the ring in there. And that's how I use the box. And she uses the box now, but that's how I wanted to use the box to present the ring. Yeah. It's a wand box, you know. And um, I also took a lot... I went and bought Hobby Lobby. I went and got little glass jars. And then I... Took parts of the movie. I actually paused the movie where Harry gives Ron the Bezoar yeah. to help with the poison. And I took some of the stuff off there. And I went out and I got gillyweed, stuff like that. And I put it in there so it looked like it and put it in the box. To I've got a bunch of pictures. You've seen them before. Yeah. Maybe I'll post some of those since we're I'm going off about it. But, yeah, she... Uh, and I didn't know that it was her father's birthday when I did that. Yeah. He wasn't real happy, but... <laughs> he didn't even say anything, and then, like, three days later, Jonah goes, uh, I think that's when my dad's birthday was, because, <laughs> obviously, you know, you get blindsided. Well, uh, well yeah, because that kind of, like... Just... I got her really good. I went, We yeah. went and bought a new car, and then I said, hey, go show your friends. Go show Gretchen, and then I told Gretchen, I was like, under any circumstances, do you let her leave the house? So what's Gretchen do? Let's her leave the house. In the middle of me setting everything up. So I call her in a frantic, I'm like, turn around and go somewhere else. Why, I told you to do this. You will enjoy it. Go away. <laughs> so it sounded really mean. Yeah. And then when she got there, she was like, I wonder why he's so mad. And then it just flew and everything, you know. She forgets. She don't even remember that I was mean to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I kind of have a, a similar thing as far as being mean. Because when I, uh, my wife, and and you'll know this, she picked out her own engagement ring. Yeah. Because she wanted something that she, <laughs> that wasn't for me to decide. Uh, damn it! Because I'm the kind of guy who's like, yeah, I kind of wanted, but I, I want to. I'm. I'm the kind of guy that's I'm worried about whether or not you're going to like it, right? Right. You know, that's what I'm worried about. Other than most people are like, oh, you know, they're caught up in the moment. I'm like, do you, do you like the ring? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you sure? So she goes, I'm just going to order it myself. In fact, she was telling people we were going to get married before I even proposed to her. <laughs> <laughs> of course. She announced it at her cousin's wedding. 
Oh yeah. You know, uh, yeah. So now, granted, she didn't announce. She didn't want to announce it to everybody, but then she said something to uh, the our table that we were going to get married. You know, and then her mom's like, "You should tell everybody." And then uh, actually, her grandpa wrote in his, wrote in his autobiography, quote <laughs> unquote. That her timing was a little off. <laughs> that's the one where she screams out. No, like she didn't scream it. No, that's the one where you told everybody that you were pregnant. Where she, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, she totally screamed it out. Yeah, that was different. No, but like, uh, so when I went, so she, she ordered the ring, and it was supposed to show up, and she was waiting around for it all day, and she had to go to work that night because that's back when she worked at Cracker Barrel, and. She wanted it. She, really, I think she wanted it to so that way she can go show it off. Right. And but it didn't show up. But it showed up after she had left. Like literally, maybe like a half hour after she left. So I. So she called me up, or you know, back in those days. Yeah. Because we didn't text as much. And I told her it didn't come. It didn't show up. She was so pissed. <laughs> Furious. Ruined her damn night, and uh, and I'm like, well, you know that you know, there's always tomorrow, you know. And she goes, she she goes, he said it was out for delivery today. She was gonna call them the next day. It's like you get this shit out here to me right now, right? So I'm like, because I was thinking, all right, man, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna kind of drag this along, and is it and it doesn't show up tomorrow either, or I try to get her out of the house for a while and it doesn't show up, and I'm just gonna try and drag it out. And, and so when I knew that she was going to call the next day, I had to think fast. Right. And we, li- we we were living in our first apartment. We had this little patio, and there was still snow on the patio. This was in December. It, it had snowed, and it had kind of like uh, melted mostly from like the roads and from the from like you know from the buildings. But there, we still had like this patch of snow on our on our patio. So I wrote, "Will you marry me?" in the snow, and I turned off the kitchen light. Turned off the light out there I, and I was hiding in the bedroom or hiding. I was like laying down, right? Acting like it, nothing was going on thinking that, well, you know, waiting for her to come home and I left the patio light on because she, she always went into the kitchen. She'd walk to the living room, go to the kitchen, set stuff down, do this, do that. And then, so she would see it. That, 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 that light was on and see that there was something written in the snow and I was going to be standing right behind her. You know, or like kneeling, right? Right. So I was waiting and waiting, and she came back, like, to the bedroom. <laughs> and I, I, like, had to, like, I ran and jumped, landed on the bed, you know, put, the put like, the ring in my pocket, and was, like, laying there, like, and she goes, what was that? And I was like, oh, oh, I just laid down. And she goes, oh, well, I brought us Taco Bell. <laughs> like, oh, cool, thanks. And I'm like. You're trying not to be... Well, I'm like, you, what the heck? You know, so... We're laying in bed, watching TV, eating our Taco Bell. I'm like, we never eat in bed. <laughs> so, you know, a little time goes by. We're done eating at this point. And then she's like... She goes, I think I'm going to go take a shower. I'm like, why don't you take your trash to the kitchen first? She goes, I'll get it tomorrow. I'm like... No, why don't you just go do it now? You know, you know, just get out of the way. He goes, I'll do it tomorrow. Don't, you know, I'm like, no, no, you'll forget. Literally, I had her so mad at me because I was making a big deal out of this. Right. <laughs> and then she went out there, saw it, turned around, and there I was. And, of course, she was happy. But she got so mad at me for I kept be- I poking her to take her damn trash out. She goes, "No!" She fight me on it. I'm like, I also told Joanna the night before that I was going to propose to her that day because I mess with her a lot. I was very. She'll tell you this. She's like, I don't trust anything you say about anything getting here, or doing anything, because I told her I was like. You know, I could. It could be a year. It could be tomorrow. Maybe a tomorrow. I'll just bend a knee and go for it. And she's like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." And then we did. <laughs> and she was like, 
And she never even caught on. Like, I was mean to her. It's like, no, you need to go go to Sam's. Go somewhere. Go away. I don't want you at the house. Well, uh, you know, we got to go do this and that. Shut up and listen to me. Just leave. Go somewhere else. Don't Don't come home. She was like a mile away. She was getting ready to pull in. I'm like, no, do not pull in here. Because I already had half of it set up. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. So, nice little story time. Yeah, end story the time. This end, end, yeah, Thank yeah, you guys yeah. for checking out this episode of the Game Addicts Podcast, where we talked about games for most of the time. So <laughs> Some uh, of the time. <laughs> I mean, thank you guys for checking us out this week. We really appreciate every single one of you guys for listening to us, no matter where you are across the world. Really appreciate it to all of you guys and to... You know, you know, for all you guys that follow us on Instagram, we have we've had a bunch of new follows over there, a bunch of new engagements from the funny pictures we're taking a mic, not getting his Octopath Traveler. Yeah, you know, I actually have a bunch of new pictures I'm going to be posting up of some of my, you know, collection. My, you know, I'm gonna, I, I took pictures of like all my systems with like some of my five favorite games for that system for whatever, or you know, just five favorite games in my collection for that system. Not necessarily my absolute favorite, but just. Ones that I thought would be neat to showcase. Right. But I'm going to be posting stuff over there. Go follow us on Instagram. We're going to really be trying to focus on Instagram probably more than any, than anything else. But I also play games twice a week over there on Twitch and post those videos as episodes twice a week over on YouTube. So by all means, subscribe to the YouTube. Help us, help us grow our YouTube channel because that's going to help us get our own URL, which we can tell you, you know, because we don't have a custom URL because we need 100 subscribers to do that. That's where you guys come in. Subscribe to the YouTube. We have all our backlog of episodes. We have all the gameplay stuff that we've done and, and will do will be over there. And because right now, the, the easiest way for me to tell you to go to the YouTube channel, go to gamematicspodcast.com uh, and over to the right-hand side, if you're on your uh, laptop or PC, or scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll have links to YouTube uh, right there with a but links to a bunch of other stuff. So uh, please do that. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your support. Until next week, I've been Brando. And I have been Mike. Game on, guys. Have a good one.